Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There is growing concern about another outage slip at the Kuburg nuclear power station. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the issue and what it could mean for load shedding and the long-term operation of the plants. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this latest potential slip? Well, it's, uh, as you say, a latest potential slip, given that this whole schedule for the uh, long-term operation of Kuburg, an additional 20 years, has been with us for about a decade now. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just experienced one delay after the other, from contracting problems um, with the supplier of key components. Um, they'd have to replace the steam generators. There's six steam generators across the two units. There were major problems with the supply of that. It had to be relocated from France to China. There have been delays uh, with getting the components into South Africa. And then there have been major issues with the actual installation of the steam generators and all the other work that goes along with uh, trying to extend the plant's life beyond its current uh, deadline for Unit 1. It came into operation in uh, July 1984 and its uh, operating life expires and its license to operate expires therefore in July next year. Now, the two licenses for the two units are currently intertwined, but Eskom is desperately trying to separate Unit 2's license, uh, which it came into operation, I think it was around November, December 1985. So they're wanting to extend that operating license to operate to the end of 2025. That, that clarity hasn't come through. And then, as I say, on site, there have been calamitous uh, issues around this uh, uh, upgrade or the, the life extension. And the outage that was initially planned, uh, when the contractors came onto site, they realized the containment buildings for these, uh, some of these uh, components will be radioactive. The containment buildings weren't prepared. So it's just been one thing after the other. And now we hear that there's a, another potential outage slip. Uh, this outage for Unit 1 started in December. It was supposed to be completed by early June. That was the initial uh, schedule. It was then, I think around March, there was an uh, indication that that date was not going to be feasible. There had been a slip um, and that it, would going, it was going to then take, uh, take until probably around September, which would be about a month before Unit 2 would have to be taken down for its long-term uh, outage which was also going to require the this, this steam generator placement. So uh, there's no confirmation yet, but the Minister of Electricity is going to be meeting with Kuber leadership this week. And uh, it seems that the outage may go into um, October, which means that Unit 2 would have, will have to be brought down probably for its big outage and its refueling. And therefore, while we haven't had 920 megawatts from one unit of Kuburg this whole year, which has been our most load shedding intensive year, we could actually have a, a situation where both units are down simultaneously uh, from, from October for a period. Uh, that means that the full 920 times two will not be available. So it's, a, it's, it's been a, a, a number of straws that are breaking this camel's back, but this is uh, a very difficult situation and we know it comes when South Africa needs all the energy it can get. What risks does it pose to the system? Well, the, the immediate risk is to, you know, having both units out, so over 1,800 megawatts out, um, means that there's a, obviously a potential for higher stages of load shedding. That's sort of two stages of load shedding if we take it like that. Um, we know that Kusile, which has also had its problems um, with its flu duct and they're putting in temporary flus at the moment, that's only going to start coming back in November, December. So that could leave us with a period as we enter the summer maintenance period. So we're coming out of winter now, which has been better than people had expected because there were warnings of stage eight. But, you know, as we enter the summer months, uh, Eskom starts ramping up planned maintenance. And if that coincides with es uh, Kuburg being out and Kusile not yet returned to service, there's potential for gaps. So there's immediate risk of higher levels or greater intensity of load shedding. But there's also a risk, particularly for the Western Cape, because the 
uh, the Kuburg nuclear power station offers a number of grid services to the, West, the Western Cape, which is far away from all the other power stations in the system other than the open cycle gas turbine. So it does place Western Cape at something of a risk if both units are down. It's not, uh, it has been modeled and it has been shown that uh, this grid is, is operable without Kuburg, but it adds uh, a potential instability to the Western Cape regional grid because it relies then very much on the transmission backbone from the northeast of the country, from the coal-fired power stations taking electricity down to Eskom, there's to that load center and not having anything that close to the load. And also it offers other grid stabilization uh, services to the system operator. So it poses some risk to the Western Cape in particular. So all in all, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's, not a, it's not a positive development. What risks does this pose for the potential 20-year life extension at Kuba? I think this is a big question. Now, there were, it was a debate as to whether Kuba should be extended, but that decision was made, and it was made some time ago. And at that stage, the, the budget was around uh, 20 billion, I think. Uh, there's no way it's that anymore. It's much more than that. Uh, we don't know what the final budget is. We know that having uh, Kuburg down for such extended periods during this very load t shedding intense period is, and adding sort of one or two stages of load shedding. It also has added costs uh, of unserved energy. So the cost of this program, the, multi you know, the multiplier costs are, are, are quite significant now. But I think we've, that, that sort of decision has been made and we want, uh, Eskom wants to keep Kuburg operating for another 20 years. The issue is that it's a highly regulated industry. Every box just doesn't only have to be ticked, it has to be verified. And uh, there's, so there's a regulated process for this long-term operation. They've got the National Nuclear Regulator overseeing this. Eskom submitted its long-term operation safety plan. Um, the nuclear regulator has to report back to the public, and I think they'll be doing that next month as to how that's going. But these slippages and outages are taking it very close to the edge of its uh, license expiry date. And already Eskom saying that as soon as uh, the license expires in July next year for Unit 1, because they're tr tr still trying to separate the two licenses between Unit 1 and Unit 2, there's going to be another long-term outage for Unit 1. And I think the implication for me is that they haven't got through all the, the, the different issues that they have to, besides the steam generator replacement, which is the major component, and apparently on Unit 1, that is now in place. They're all installed, the welding's underway. But there are other issues that have to be dealt with before the regulator and even the international authorities feel that this is a safe to operate. So it looks like they're going to operate it for a period and then they're going to take it down again, probably to get all these other issues uh, ticked off or signed off. Uh, so we'll have, again, Kuburg out, uh, or at least one unit out. And if Unit 2 doesn't get its extended extension to its license and, it, and uh, the regulator says, no, your license expires on, uh, in July next year and not in November 2025, well, there could be a situation where we don't have both those units next year. So it, it is, I think it does pose a risk. I think there's a commitment to getting this uh, over the line eventually, but there's going to be a period of uh, this year and next year where at least one unit of Kuburg will not be operating for most of the year, of this year, and or that we know that already. We could have a period later this year where both are down, and then we could have a period next year where one or both are down again, depending how well advanced uh, the, the Kuburg uh, uh, team is in getting this project over the line. But from where I sit, it doesn't look like they're going to be ready for the, for the sign-off of the long-term operation next year, and they're going to be uh, further long-term outages to get all those other issues dealt with. So I suppose there have been warnings from uh, commentators about this over many years and suggestions that maybe this wasn't the best course of action, but I think the amount of money, the amount of effort and energy that's been spent, I think Kuburg uh, will remain in the system and they will eventually get the op license to operate for a further 20 years. Whether it will fit into the system neatly as it becomes a more variable renewable ed energy led system and the, the nuclear plant will be asked to follow load rather than be base load as they call it 
um, it, that's that's another uh, risk factor, but not one that uh, it's in the immediate future. At the moment, we, we as we know, we're very short of electricity all around. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.